Membrane lipids. This is another function of lipids. There was energy storage, and there are membrane lipids. So there's um, several different kinds of these. Glycerophospholipids. So look at the, the parts of that word. Glycero, that's a little bit like glycerol, right? Phospho has to do with phosphate, and then it's a lipid, so it's a fat. It's got fatty acids. So a glycerophospholipid is a lipid that has two fatty acids, and in place of the third fatty acid, it's got a phosphate group that's esterified. It's, it's sandwiched between the glycerol molecule and an alcohol. So here's our block picture of a triacylglycerol. It's got three fatty acids with ester linkages. The glycerophospholipid has two fatty acids, but on one end, it's got a phosphate and an alcohol. And so this actually has four phosphate, I'm sorry, ester linkages instead of three. And again, these fatty acids can be different or the same, so we have possibility for variation there. And then the identity of this alcohol gives us a whole range of possibilities as well. So these guys can also undergo hydrolysis and saponification, just like the triacylglycerols do. But we're going to end up with five products instead of four. Because with the triacylglycerol, there were three bonds, three ester linkages. And when we broke those, we got the three fatty acids and the glycerol. We got four products. Now we can also break, we can break this one and this one and get two fatty acids. But these ester linkages can also hydrolyze or saponify, and then we'll get an alcohol and phosphate, and then the glycerol. So we'll actually have five different products. The alcohol attached to that phosphate group is usually one of the three amino alcohols. Um, and we'll talk about these amino acids later. But choline, ethanolamine, and serine, here are their ionic forms. And we see that these are amino acids, and these all are alcohols. And so through this alcohol group, they can esterify and attach to that phosphate group. And when you have a glycerophospholipid with these, one of these alcohols, if it's choline, it's called phosphatidylcholine. With ethanolamine as the alcohol, it's called phosphatidylethanolamine or phosphatidylserine if it's got serine as the alcohol. And you may or may not have heard of those names before. So draw the structural formula for the glycerophospholipid that produces upon hydrolysis equal, equal molar amounts of glycerol, phosphoric acid, and choline, and twice that molar amount of lauric acid, a 12-0 fatty acid. Wow. Well, let's go back here and remind ourselves, what are we looking at? Choline. Let's remind ourselves what choline is. So choline is a hydroxyl group, two CH2 groups, and then this is a quaternary ammonium, isn't it? It's got three methyl groups on it. So I'm going to draw that over here so we don't forget what it is. So OH, CH2, CH2, N, CH3, 3. That's choline. So what they're telling us here, um, glycerol, phosphoric acid, and choline. If we hydrolyze one molecule, then we should get one glycerol, one phosphoric acid, one choline, and we'll get two lauric acids. 
So this glycerol phospholipid is going to have this glycerol backbone. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and give myself some room. The top two, we, we typically draw these always in the same orientation just because it makes it easier to look at. The top two would form ester linkages with this lauric acid. So I'm going to erase those hydrogens because they're going to go away. And this is going to be that 12-0 fatty acid. So there's one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this one is also with the lauric acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. See, that's the, that's the amount of math we have in organic chemistry, counting carbon atoms. Now, if this was a triacyl glycerol, we would put another one down here. But this is a glycerophospholipid. So down here, we've got a phosphate group. So that's going to be P. And we'll get these guys like that. And an O. And that oxygen does an ester link with the choline, which is an alcohol. And I'm going to check myself here and make sure I don't steer you wrong. No, I've already messed up. This phosphate is messed up. So this is, oops, yeah, don't write with the eraser. It doesn't work very well. So there's our phosphate. So this oxygen is going to it starts out like this, the phosphoric acid, and that hydrogen is going to come off, and the OH up here is going to come off, and this, the rest of the choline is going to come in here. Again with the eraser. CH2, CH2. N plus CH3. It's a little bit like a puzzle where you're just taking these pieces and you're sticking them together. And yeah, each of these pieces has a lot of atoms in it. But the only thing that changes is a little bit on the end. And you change a little bit on the end here and then they'll stick together. And the same thing with the phosphate with the phosphate um, it had an OH on this side and an OH on that side, and so you take the H off one side and it sticks on here, and you take the H off the other. Almost like it's got sticky tape, and you pull off the protective label, and then it'll stick together. So it can be real helpful to think of those block diagrams. Right, so here we've got our fatty acid, and here we've got another fatty acid, we'll just call him Fa. And here we've got the phosphate, and then we have our alcohol. Um, it's uh, choline. So it's sort of modular, right? And so things form, and then you can hydrolyze them or saponify them and take them back apart again. Any questions? I know it's a bit much to absorb. So the glycerophospholipids and the triacyl glycerols have some similarities in structure. We looked at their 
those box diagrams. They both have glycerol and three things hanging off the side. The two top things are fatty acids. The difference is in the bottom one. But even though they have similar structures, they have very different biochemical functions. The triacylglycerols are energy storage molecules. But the glycerophospholipids functions as components of cell membranes. And the major structural difference between these two is that of their polarity. And that is responsible for their having um, differing chemical, biochemical functions. I'm going to, I have to fix this slide. There, that looks a little better. So the polarity is different. The triacylglycerols are nonpolar. They're those long fatty acid chains. And that ester linkage is not very polar at all, especially given all those uh, hydrocarbon tails. So the triacylglycerols are nonpolar. The glycerophospholipids are polar because that bottom group with the alcohol and the phosphate, the phosphate is actually an ion. And so the glycerophospholipids are much more polar. So when we look at them, um, here's a combination of the structural formula with the boxes to show us what these different groups are. Here's the glycerol. Here are the two fatty acids. There's a phosphate group, and this is choline. Well, here, this is ionic, and this is ionic. And so we've got a polar end here, and this end is nonpolar. This doesn't really give us the shape. What happens is this actually kind of bends around and it stretches out like this. It almost looks like a two-legged octopus or something. Here's the choline and the phosphate part, and we call this the head. We say it has a polar head and it has two nonpolar tails. And this is very significant for how the glycerophospholipids can be part of a membrane. It looks a little bit like the fatty acids, the fatty acid salts when they're acting as soap, right? There you had the carboxylate ion and you had one long tail. There's another group called sphingophospholipids. So instead of glycerol, they were glycerophospholipids. Sphingophospholipids have sphingosine as the base or the platform molecule. So it's got sphingosine here, and the sphingosine has um, an amide linkage to a fatty acid, and then an ester linkage to a phosphate and an alcohol. So this bottom part is very much like the glycerophospholipid, and this part is similar, but it's an amide linkage. Sphingosine, this guy here, this is his actual structural formula. So this part is what they show up here as this long tail. And here's, we have two alcohol groups and we have an amine group. And this amine is what gives us the amide linkage here with fatty acid. So sphingosine itself would look like this, and when we attach the fatty acid, we get a second nonpolar tail, and we get the polar head. The polar head is coming from the alcohol and the phosphate group. And so the, the sphingophospholipid has two ester linkages and one amide linkage, because when, when the fatty acid combines here, we get an amide linkage. These do participate in hydrolysis and saponification. I'm just going to go back real quick here because here, ester linkages. The ester linkages can be hydrolyzed and saponified, right? If it has ester linkages, it will participate in those reactions. And there's a bunch of different sphingophospholipids. One group are called sphingomyelins. And these have choline as the alcohol. These are found in all cell membranes, and they're a very important component in the myelin sheath 
that is around your nerves. And so here is an example of a sphingomyelin. We've got choline as the alcohol attached to this phosphate. In this example, we have stearic acid. And that top tail is not a separate fatty acid. It's actually part of that sphingosine molecule. So you really have to try to take a step back and see the big picture of all these wacky, complicated biomolecules. And then there are sphingoglycolipids. So again, sphingo has that sphingosine. And lipid, it's got a fatty acid in it. Glyco refers to a carbohydrate. So now we've got sphingosine here, the fatty acid, and the difference between the sphingoglycolipid and the sphingophospholipid is down here. Instead of a phosphate, we've got either a monosaccharide or an oligosaccharide. Remember an oligosaccharide, I think they said was like 3 to 10 saccharide units. So here's an example with a monosaccharide. A glucose, sorry, galactose molecule can be attached down here at the end of the sphingosine. Here we have an amide linkage to stearic acid and the rest of the sphingosine. So these do have a head and tail structure, but now the head is a saccharide instead of a phosphate alcohol. And these, these sugars are polar. They've got OH groups all over them. So this is still a polar head and the two nonpolar tails. Cerebrocytes are the simplest group of sphingoglycolipids. They have one monosaccharide. And these primarily occur in brain tissue. Cerebro refers to your brain, but they also occur in the myelin sheath over the nerves. Another group are called gangliosides, and these are more complex sphingoglycolipids. These have branched chain carbohydrates of up to seven monosaccharide residues. These are also found in your brain, but in the gray matter of the brain, and also in the myelin sheath. So here is a lovely summary slide showing our energy storage lipids that we talked about, the triacyl glycerols, and these different kinds of membrane lipids. This was a glycerophospholipid, where the platform that everything's attached to is glycerol. And this is a sphingophospholipid, where the platform is sphingosine. These are both phospholipids because they've got a phosphate alcohol group. Phosphate alcohol. This is the polar head of these guys and the nonpolar tail. This one's all nonpolar. And then we have the sphingoglycolipid with sphingosine, but a glyco, a carbohydrate group here instead of a phosphate alcohol. So. They're all related, and yet they're all different. <laughs>